Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Molnar here. How's everybody getting along? Thank you for joining me for this edition of Media Marks Weather Eastern and Weather Northeastern. Yes, we got some severe weather across the plains. That's going to be translating, as you can see here, across parts of the Mississippi and Ohio River Valley. Look what's going on, though. We have a winter side of the system. It will be being pushed pretty far, though, into northern New York. At parts of New England as well. So we'll get into all that. We'll see just how much snow, ice, freezing rain, everything in between. You're going to be dealing with a coastal low developing into parts of the Northeast for your Saturday as well. We'll get into details with that. But you know, the big story is many of you probably heard, look at this. Yeah, this is more than just eye candy. This is actually showing up on the European model. We'll just see just how pronounced this is. We'll take a look at all the models and see the magnitude of this, but look at this. If this sets up, we could be looking at, this is right around March 11th, March 10th, March 11th. This could be, if things line up properly, could we get a big storm out of this, a big snowstorm? And before we dive right into it, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, go right ahead, join me on this weather journey, hit the bell notification button as well, smash the like button, Helps tremendously. Question or comment down below. Keep our weather conversation going. Let's dive right into it here. See what's going on. All right, so let's see what leads up to this big trough. So there's our weekend system. See, it's been from the plains all the way up into the northeast blasting, but it's just not enough to bring us a massive snowstorm for millions of people. So, yeah, as we fast forward here through next week, there's March 7th. So see that big trough there across the west? You can actually see it right out here in the Intermountain West. Let's continue to progress and see exactly what that leads to. Look at that. That's the 9th of March. There's the 10th. And look at this. Yeah, this is where we really start to get some interest because we get this ridge developing out west. That's what we want to see in the east for big snow. And this big old trough here across the midsection. Now, look how it starts to carve out as we go out in time here. Uh, let's continue to go down the, the pathway here. And there it is. Look at this. Yeah. So the big question is, though, are we going to get any storms to line up with it? This is all fine and dandy. You get this massive cold blast, and I'll be showing you the temperatures. But can we actually get a snowstorm to actually line up? Well, let's take a look. All right. So upper air pattern, 500 millibar height anomalies. Here is our big old storm here for the weekend slamming into this ridge it's going to help break it down a little bit so look at the blocking up here in greenland let's go out in time and see how this plays out for our east coast ridge or east coast trough i should say coming up so look at this here across the west yeah this keep your eyes on this this is march 5th look at the blocking going up up there in greenland you got massive ridge i know this doesn't look very impressive to you in the east because you've seen this this is what, week 12 or 13th or 14th or kind of lost track. But look at the blocking going on up in northeast North America. Now watch what starts to happen. Is that blocking head south here? This is Wednesday, March 8th. Watch what happens to that trough there in the central part of the United States. It just blossoms and it's able to dig way to the south here. And let's see as we go out in time. Does it stick around? That is the key. It does stick around, and it just grows in size. So we're going to be dealing with this for at least a week or two along the East Coast, and we'll, it'll be interesting to see if we get any sort of winter storm forming out of this. All right, so let's take the European model here. Let's take this storm. That's the severe weather there heading across the south Thursday night. Early Friday becomes more of a linear threat. Look at how quickly the European really called this well with bombing this low, and since it's bombing so much, it's going to push that mid-level warm air right up into the northeast and we won't have too much room for snow until you get north of the new york state thruway here look at this 1023 millibar high though that's supplying us with cold plenty of cold air up into northern part of new, ha uh, new hampshire vermont new york and maine so yeah 977 millibars that's nothing to sneeze at here this is 1 p.m friday afternoon look at that yeah, and you're starting to see here in the northeast the precipitation onset is m going to be much later. It's a much slower moving storm than was originally thought. And you see 975 millibars. This thing is really bogging down here into parts of, by this point, it's becoming the Ohio Valley. And look at this. You might have some blizzard conditions here just southeast of Chicago for a couple hours at least. Look at that. And then that pivots up into parts of the Ohio Valley as we go out in time here. Look at this. Saturday, 3Z just after midnight here look at this right around midnight actually snowfall rates those big snowfall rates move up into ontario canada though and look at this we might actually have some convection thunderstorms all the way up to harrisburg williamsport and wilkes bear scranton as well crazy crazy weather here 
European model is a little slower with developing this uh, initial coastal development low, high pressure retreating to the east here. So we're kind of sandwiched right in between here. The heaviest snow will be following just north of the Capital District in Albany, New York, up by Saratoga Springs. Glens Falls on northward there into the Adirondack Saranac Lake. Now look what interesting starts to happen here. 989 millibar low starts to form starts to blow up here but you know by your point here in the new york and pennsylvania interior at this point it's just too late because the moisture that this thing gets cranking goes well to your east and it pivots right up into parts of once again the adirondacks white green mountains up and up to maine as well so here into southern new hampshire this does you no know service or southern uh new england i should say this does you no service because this is going to start to get warm air blasting out ahead of it here into parts of Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Cape Cod as well. Look at that. nine. Let's just back that up just a little bit there. You can see some solid snowfall accumulations up here into parts of Maine and New Hampshire as well. If we get, continue to get that conveyor belt, but look how quickly it shuts off just behind it. New York City, you're just going to have some wind, some scattered rain, and snow showers. 987 millibar low by Saturday just after noon. But that starts to pull away. And as you can see, as we go out in time, high pressure starts to build into the northeast and the east coast for that matter. And we get that firecracker ridge trying to form. But look what we're March 7th here. Remember what I told you about March 10th and 11th and 12th here. Look what starts to form. You see this big old trough and the stacked low back here into parts of uh, Colorado start to form here. High pressure off the Florida coast. So take a look what starts to happen here. I'll show you momentarily on the temperature map as well. Yeah, this really starts to blast. This system here, northern stream branch, will we have a southern stream low here for them? This is March 9th. Will we get any sort of east coast snowstorm here? It's pretty far out, but guess what? It is still possible. At this point in the game, it doesn't look like it. Once again, as has been so popular this winter... You get this massive cold air. Look at this trough all the way down into Florida. Look what happens. It pushes the low way too far east. And you know what? I would not be surprised if this solution happens and once again misses most of the coastal cities. we got to remain a little optimistic for those of you that want snow. But you know what? It's really hard to when you see this sort of thing happen again, again, and again, and again. All right, so let's take a look at the latest European snowfall outlook here. We're just going to take it through. Let's stop here at Sunday. Okay, so this takes our, our weekend system. Yeah, north of the New York State Thruway from Syracuse to Albany, this is where we're going to see the Adirondacks, White and Green Mountains. They are going to be the big winners with this storm. We'll see a moderate accumulation from Syracuse, Albany, down through parts of just northwest of Boston here, Worcester, especially west of Worcester and just north of Albany. So, yeah, down and through the twin tiers of New York, Pennsylvania, the Catskills, lower Hudson Valley, this area, you'll see a lot of sleep pellets mixing in. So I think this is a little bit overdone here. And you take a look at the damn three kilometer here. This is what we're looking at. You know, it's pushed the heaviest snow well to the north here. In fact, further north than even the European model. So, yeah, there you have it. There's big snow totals here and warning criteria. All right, so the HRRR model, let's take a look. Here you go. So, yeah, I'm not fully in agreement with this either. Um, the European and the NAM 3 kilometer are doing a decent job. This is just overdone, especially, you know, south of this line. It's just way, way overdone and probably a little bit overdone in this region as well. Looking pretty good up here into parts of northern New York, Vermont, and New Hampshire. All right, so we're going to continue with the severe weather here into parts of the south. That's going to be the big story heading on into Thursday evening and Thursday night. So it'll become more of a linear threat, damaging straight line. Winds will become the big threat over here into parts of Arkansas. And you get into parts of Mississippi later on here in Louisiana. So definitely keep an eye out here. But you know what? As we go out in time here it's going to transition towards the northeast. And all that convection, look at this. It's, you can see that comma head perfectly. Look at that. we we got to go pretty far north before we get to see some of this snowfall. Look at this. This is uh, 7 p.m. on Friday. So you'll see some snow showers here in parts of Chicago. You're right teetering right on the edge here in Detroit. And you know what? Look at here into the northeast. This is much warmer than was expected. And look at all this convection to the west here. 
this is an actually a lot of convection and there's going to be some heavy rainers and some thunder embedded thunderstorms here so would not be surprised if we see some gusty thunderstorms here uh torrential rain potential here in some of the isolated areas so yeah we're gonna have some sleep pellets ice pellets mixed in here across parts of the northeast it's mainly going to be a snow event up here from the new york state throughway uh from syracuse area Albany on northward here. So these areas are going to see tremendous amounts of snow. In these areas, you'll see moderate types of snow here. So that's what we're going to be looking at as we go forward here. Take a look at this as we go out in time. You can see that radar, future radar, just filling in here. And, you know, we get some colder air that tries to form back here during the nighttime hours here. Um, but, you know, there's not going to be much accumulation here. You can see the dry slot really starting to work its way up. I think it'll be a little bit more pronounced than this. I think the dry slot will encompass more of this area. So, you know, we're going to shut off that precipitation pretty quickly here as we go out in time. And you can see the big winners with this storm is going to definitely be just north of Albany here. And you get over towards north of Boston, we're going to have some mixing going on into parts of uh, Massachusetts here as we go in time as well. So here it is. So as we continue in time, you can see, let's just zoom out a little bit. You can see the big picture of the storm. It'll wind up and we'll get a coastal system. There it is, 8 a.m. on Saturday morning. So as you're waking up for your cup of coffee or whatever, if you're still in bed, yeah, we're going to start to fill in. There's still some rain showers here across parts of Connecticut, Rhode Island. So it's now looking at a big winter storm here. But look at this. We start to fill in the snowfall here into parts of the New England area. So as we continue in time here, let's last few frames here. Look at this. So we're going to pivot the cold air here behind. But by this point, I think it'll be too late for Boston. You know, you'll still be socked in with some rain showers and some sleep pellets mixed in here onto the north side. All right, so let's explain it here on the European model. We're going to take a vertical cross-section of the atmosphere right around Binghamton, New York here. And it basically gives us a good idea what's going on in the upper atmosphere. The European model's been really handling this. And, of course, some of you that have taken meteorology courses in college, you'll recognize this as the skew T log P. So the high thermodynamic diagram here. So let's take a look here. You were starting off 41 degrees. This is right around just after noon, 1 p.m. So as we go throughout the day, we're cooling it down to 40. Now you see this bent here. This is the temperature bar here. Initially, you're warmer at the ground. So there's no issue if precipitation starts falling. But look at this. This is by 0Z. So we're getting after dark here, 32 degrees. And see this layer of warm air? It's just shallow enough here as the snowflakes falling, it melts in this layer and then it refreezes once it gets down here and then falls as a sleet pellet. And that's what we're going to see. We're not going to see much freezing rain or snow. It's basically going to be predominantly sleet pellets falling here, 32 degrees. Look at this layer right into the mid-atmosphere here. So you're going about three kilometers up. That's enough to get these sleet pellets going and hitting the ground here. And that's 3Z. Let's see how long this lasts. Here's 6Z. Look, you're down to 30 in Binghamton. But look at this nose of warm air. It's just blasting from the south here. And it's you got that cold layer at the ground. So you're going to have sleet. Lots of sleet pellets here. 33 degrees. This is by 9Z. So you're above sunrise here at this point. So at this point, it'll start to melt, which is good news for you. Or bad news, whichever way you look at it, if you really wanted a winter storm. It's bad news. But look at that. There it is. There's the thermodynamic diagram. And this is what we're going to see. You know, as a storm becomes a coastal storm, the thermodynamic diagram, these dew point and temperature bars start to straighten out. All right, so take a look at severe weather. This is during the day Friday. Look at this slight risk across a large part of the south, Tennessee. Enhanced risk here across parts of north central Tennessee to Kentucky. So we wouldn't be surprised to see some thunderstorms all the way up here to parts of Pennsylvania and Ohio. So here we go nationally with the snowfall here. There it is. So that takes us uh, takes us all the way through Sunday, March 12th. There you have it. Yeah, up here in northern New England, northern New York, you just keep getting more snow. You keep getting more snow up here into parts of Michigan, northern Indiana, and the west just gets richer with the snow as well. All right, so let's take a look at quantitative precipitation totals here. I know many of you have been asking for historical comparison rainfall. I'm trying to find a source that can actually provide that reliably. Um, I haven't forgot about you, but look at this. As we continue, there's the weekend storm into the northeast, and as we continue, yeah, 
Let's just stop it right there. Liquid precipitation amounts here in the severe weather is going to be quite a bit, two to three and a half inches. But here into the northeast, do you notice that again? There's kind of a precipitation shadow in here into parts of eastern Pennsylvania, upstate New York, into Connecticut, Rhode Island. Yeah, that's so typical. It's been so typical this winter. And look at this as we continue through next week. Look at that. Look at that big hole. It's like a donut hole here. Yeah, this is where you've basically, especially this area, have barely seen any snow this winter. And it just, it just seems like this takes us through the 12th. Yeah, it just seems like it's going to continue. Now, let's take a look at the Western Pacific here. Things are really quiet. This is really nice. Look at this. The Philippine Islands here. I know many of you have said, you know, the rains have kind of diminished a bit. But you will be getting some showers here. This is towards... Uh, later Friday here at 7 p.m. Look at that. Those kind of fizzle out. And look at this. We see a nice period of dryness. This is through the 8th, 9th, and look at that, the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, the 13th, the 14th. You start to see some scattered showers here, but let's see here. Let's stop right around the 14th here. So here you go. So what's going on here? It's actually not a lot. Now, we actually have some systems out here, and we actually have a cyclone that could be forming here in the southern hemisphere just off the coast of Australia. But look it up here into the Philippines. Things are looking A-OK -okay until we get to about March 18th here. You see this big old system right here, and we got another one behind it. Definitely need to keep an eye on these as we go out in time here. And that's the end of our time reel here. So, yeah, as you get towards the middle to latter part of March, that's when the tropical activity over here will start to explode. And take a look here at John from Norwalk, Connecticut. Look at this. Yeah, he's got uh, 28th of February here, the snowstorm that occurred earlier in the week. Take a look at that. Cruising out there, Norwalk, Connecticut. Nice capture there, John. You can see the snow is falling across the highway there. So nice day to get out there and enjoy it. You know, you have, probably haven't seen too much snow this winter. Nice capture, John. So let's take a look at temperatures here. Let's take a look at the trend here. Gives us a good idea here on the European model. I know it's not the best temperature outlook, but you know what? It gives us a really good idea. A generalized solution. So yeah, this is what we got going on. Look at this surge of warm air. This is exactly what we're talking about. You see very little cold air damming up here in the parts of the northeast. It's it's too warm to get any sort of extreme snowstorm up here. Now, you start to see Saturday night, we get some areas that flirt with the 32 degree line here. So yeah, that sort of thing there'll be some areas that end up with, you know, warning criteria snow, especially north of Syracuse and Albany here and up into parts of the white, the green mountains. But you know what? As we go on time here, look at this big warm air push here along the East Coast. This is Saturday morning. And we had, look at this, Saturday afternoon. It's just way too warm. You, you only see northern New England here in the 30s. And then out west, you're actually getting kind of warm as well. So let's kind of propagate. We'll skip here. There's Sunday's highs. That This looks more like spring, doesn't it? Look at this. The 60-degree line is all the way up into southern Pennsylvania here. Seriously. What, what season is it? Look at this. For Monday, 67 degrees in Pittsburgh, 61 in Cleveland, 69 out here in central part of Illinois. This is crazy. you, you got to go way back here for bottled-up cold air across the northern plains. And then we see head into, let's see, Wednesday. Let's take a look here. So this is the, oh, let's back that up just a little bit. So there we go. So there's our highs towards Wednesday. And then we head into Thursday. This is where things get a little bit interesting. So you start to see the flip-flop here. Yeah, we're getting into the 40s, into the northeast. But look what's happening across the northern plains. Single digits. Now, is that going to pivot? Here's Friday. Here we go. So Friday, yeah. The cold air is trying to spill. This is March 11th. I thought it would be a little colder than this. But we got to take what we can get, don't we? Look at this. 30s all the way down to northern New Georgia here. That's pretty interesting. Um, Let's see. And overnight lows. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. We start to get some 32-degree line all the way down to the parts of the deep south here. I mean, that's not tremendously cold. We're still holding on to 40s and 50s in South Florida. But at least you're getting colder down here, too. I mean, got to love it, huh? And then look at this. We head into Saturday and into Sunday. Yeah, look at that. There's our last frame. This is Sunday morning. I'll leave you with this. Look at this. Blasting cold air. And we still try to continue to funnel this south and eastward. Extended outlook from a hometown viewers. Binghamton to Scranton, Upper Susquehanna River Valley. Yeah, Friday, 
We'll start with some rain showers around 3 or 4 p.m. And then by Friday night, we'll transition to some sleet pellets mixed with rain showers. Yeah, 32 for a low, less than one inch of sleet and snow. So Saturday, we quickly warm it back up to 44 degrees. It's just way too warm for a winter storm with that warm nose of air at mid-levels. Another quarter inch of rain. And then Sunday, some scattered rain showers. And then Monday, we clear it out nicely up to 48 degrees feeling spring-like. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather Northeastern and Weather Eastern. Don't forget Facebook Media Mark, Weather Northeastern. Also, Hurricane Northeastern at Susquehanna Weather for my local page. And guess what? MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com is Twitter at Weather Eastern. Don't forget, question or comment down below. Smash that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell button, share the video, and thanks for joining me.